Yes, I think I always had a desire to uh, to make things. So I think early on I did screen print T-shirts, um, and then I think I didn't find fulfillment and just creating screen print pieces. So I moved into cut and sew, and the cut and sew I moved into like more experimental silhouettes. And then as I progressed more, I think I became fascinated with like uh, leather goods, bags, and accessories. And then um, naturally, like I have like, I think growing up and in, in how I grew up, I have like a natural knack to make things serve me more. Um, you know, like growing up, I grew up, I grew up in one of the poorest cities in the country. And, uh, you know, I could recall only having like two or three pairs of pants and those pairs of pants lasted me like an entire year. So I think now when I, when I design a pair of pants, it's important for me for those pants to be applicable to all situations so it's like i need a pair of pants that i can wear in the spring in the summer so like even like the uh i actually have a pair of pants like these pants here like you know the basic black pant i could wear it every day but i can also convert this pant into like a pair of shorts and then i made it out of a material where i can um also use them as swim trunks I put breathe holes in them for breathability so that I can also hike. So I think when I when I hit a point when I started DR14, it was important for me to be able to almost create a mood board utilizing items um, that were utilitarian in nature. So, and I think a lot of that just comes from my um, my childhood wanting to have things that lasted that could be worn over and over again and still you know, up here cool and clean. It's why, because I think my, my inspiration in making bags didn't necessarily come from, um, I think I started where, where I come from, I grew up in America, um, part of hip hop culture. And I think um, growing up like a black male in America, we could, there's no bag for men, you know, women, Women can carry bags all the time. And like, as a man, it's like, you, you only have a couple of options. You can carry a backpack, you can carry a duffel bag. And I think by the time I was like in my, you know, getting a little older, men wanted to carry bags. So they started creating like man bags and fannies. And I feel like we never created a bag that sat properly with like the male psyche. So I think for me, I, I started out like, what bag can I make that smaller? Like I started creating bags. I don't want to walk around all day with a duffel bag. Um, if I'm on the train, a backpack can be a bit inconvenient because I don't know if a person is like behind me going in my bag or I can't watch my items. So I really just started out trying to figure out what I, what kind of bag I could create that could make or inspire men to want to wear bags and not feel uh, feminine about it. Um, to not feel like their masculinity was in question because they were carrying a bag. Um, and one day I was just, I was looking at a bulletproof vest and I was thinking about 50 Cent and I was like, was so cool, 50 was wearing this bulletproof vest and it seemed so like, ah, so macho. And I was like, it would be really cool if I like cut down a bulletproof vest and made it a bag. I'm like, and then I would, you know, I could take those things and uh, I could put my, my phone here, my wallet here, I could put my cards here and be because it's on my chest, I can watch it. I feel secure about it. My hands are free. I can drive with it. I can put a jacket over it. I can put it, you know, put a jacket under it. And I just ran to my shop and, you know, we just started sewing the first chest rig. And I, I realized like, this is a bag that men, no matter how macho, how tough, how strong, or, you know, however they think, they'll wear this bag. So I think that spark of imagination literally came from trying to change or shift the social construct of uh, just creating an opportunity for men to feel like I could wear a bag without, without feeling like it's feminine. So I think for me, I, I fell in love with leather work. Um, I fell in love with leather work. I think I, as a creator and as a designer, I, the, the thing I appreciate most is process. And the process of like uh, 
you know, knowing where leather comes from and then actually watching leather go through all of the different steps to the point where like we're making a pattern, we're skiving the leather, we're backing the leather, we're stitching each, you know, each stitch we want to make sure is on point. And then knowing like this item can potentially live in somebody's wardrobe for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Like I think with a nice shirt, you know, a really nice shirt, you might keep it for 10 years. A really nice pair of shoes might last you five, 10 years, but a really nice bag, you you know, you can keep it a lifetime, you pass it down. Like I'm, I'm sure you, you know, your mother, your father, they may have like Louis Vuitton and Gucci bags and they pass those bags down. You never get to a point where you're like, ah, oh, throw that, throw that Dior bag in the trash. I'm never going to wear it again. So I think that's where I came from became fascinated with like leather goods. It was like a nice leather good, you know, it's, it stands the test of time, it could last a lifetime. So, I, you know, and, and with that, it's like if I'm gonna make a leather good, I want the attention to detail to, to be so precise that a person will appreciate it for, you know, 10, 20, 30 years and it can stand the test of time. I think like it's, it's a, I have probably like five to 10 people and their story and what they stand for like genuinely inspire me. So like, I think, you know, I'm fascinated with Walt Disney. Um, his, his ability to bring his imagination to life. Like we talking about a person who like built Disney, like, like his mind spawned Disney, right? So I'm like in Disney riding through like caves with, and I'm like, you know, this was somebody's idea. And now we're like riding through it. And all of these people work here and are a part of making his idea, this thing that we can experience, you know? And I feel like he was just a brilliant man, you know? And when I think about Mickey, I think about, you know, I think about Walt. And, and Louis Vuitton, I think um, the man, like Louis Vuitton, the man, his, his attention to detail, um, the leather craftsmanship. And if you, you know, something that stands the test of time, like if you pick up a Louis Vuitton bag, you know, every stitch is on point. It's pretty consistent. It's like, I, I'm not gonna find a Louis Vuitton bag that's flawed. So for him to have that dedication and approach to uh, craftsmanship and for that brand to be over a hundred years old, 150 years old, and that level of craftsmanship still is embedded in the company's DNA today. You know, I'm a huge fan of Louis Vuitton, as well as a fan of Bernard Arnault, who now, you know, who, who now, you know, owns the brand. So to be able to bring those two things together and put my own spin on them is uh, me paying tribute to people who I look up to or people who inspire me. I'm still like, uh, I'm a I'm a huge fan of like art and culture myself. Uh, so it's, it's it's funny because some of the people who I actually look up to call me on a daily basis for things. And it's still, every once in a while it blows my mind. Like I think uh, last night Usher Face signed me. I was like, I need your help with something. And I'm like, all right, what do you need? And it's like, he's like, come to my studio. And I rushed to his studio and he's like, I had a concept for a sneaker and you you know, I, I know you can help me with this sneaker and I know you can do it last minute because I know you got all the tools right at, at the crib. And I'm like, okay. And I'm realizing like, Usher just FaceTimed me to make him a product. And it's like, you know, he's he's like a a friend at this point. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's really like, I'm, I'm flattered by it. I'm just appreciative to have, have a gift that I could share with people and for people to identify the gift and be like open and willing to work with me. You know, I'm, I'm just honored. You know, I, I aspire to be, you know, I wanna be good at what I do. And I think when when people that you look up to, like uh, accredit you for being good at what you do, it, it, it serves as like a form of validation. It, it feels good, you know, it's like, if you was a singer and then you get that call from the artist and they want you to hop on the track it's like wow they really want me to hop on the track when it means that they appreciate the work that I do and not you know I appreciate it because we some products like we work on products for like 10 20 50 70 I have products that we worked on for like 120 hours to like make something so when a person like sees that and they appreciate it whether it be a celebrity or just a person that just appreciates quality is always flattering you know <laughs>